Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. Today on the bench I have an Acer V58. We've had a look at this board already, it was one of my previous mail episodes. This was sent by one of my viewers to see if I could revive it and uh, I couldn't really figure out what was wrong on that episode. It was just a quick view, a quick check and uh, this has been sitting on a shelf for a while so I just wanted to have a look and understand whether I can fix it or not. If you remember that episode, the board was dead. Most importantly, it was stuck into reset. Uh, but then eventually I found a jumper on the board which was uh, calling from a different type of power supply, uh, one which had the resume feature or something like that. The manual is not very clear. And when I moved that jumper, the reset started working, but the board is still dead. <laughs> so let me thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. And uh, now let's take a look at this board and see what we can do for it. Right, so the situation is that the board is completely dead. I have a Pentium 200 on the board, which I might need to double check whether it's working or not, but I'm assuming it's working for the time being, and uh, I've set all the jumpers, I've been through the jumpers several times uh, to make sure that nothing was in the wrong place, and if I power up the board, I have absolutely nothing. I have lines on my postcard in there, there's no beeps, no nothing. You know, when you have lines, it means there's no codes being executed, no, absolutely nothing. There's nothing to do with RAM or anything or cards or, or, or stuff. So I would say let's quickly double check the voltages and the clocks and, you know, make sure that the CPU is actually uh, getting that. And then, then we'll move from where we left last time. Right, so this is a 200 megahertz, uh, simple non-MMX Pentium, so it's a single voltage, 3.3 volts, uh, 66 megahertz FSB and three multipliers. So let's check the voltages first. It should be, again, the same voltage for the two halves of the CPU. Power on now. We got 3.34 on this half and 3.34 on the other half, so that's totally fine. Then we can check the uh, clock and make sure it's 66 megahertz. And we got 66.6 megahertz, so that's totally fine. And the next pin here is the reset line, so we should see, uh, I mean, my postcard says it's fine, but you know, let's check on the CPU directly. Uh, I should uh, turn on and the reset line should go high or low after a moment. We'll check in a sec. Three, two, one, go. It goes high and then it goes back low after a moment. So the reset line is working, the voltages are working, the clock is there, it should work. <laughs> well, this is um, kind of good news, uh, also bad news, because it's not an easy fix. Let's move to the next step, which I don't know what that is, to be honest, but I need to think about something. Well, the first thing I'd like to try is to see if I can reflush the BIOS. I found something online. There is not much available about this board, unfortunately, but uh, I managed to find what seems to be the V58 BIOS. Now, I have it loaded here on my uh, programmer software. I've loaded the uh, new, new BIOS, the potential BIOS that I found online, and I got the BIOS chip of the board inside my programmer. And if I verify it, you should compare it with uh, what's on this chip. So let's uh, click OK, verify. Uh, it's found some differences. And scroll down and see what we're talking about. OK, well, there is quite a lot of differences, I would say. Yeah, it's mostly different, not all of it. I would say I've saved the backup of this bias just in case. Let's try and flash this one and see if by any chance it works. Okay, flash is successful, so let's put it back on the board, power up and see what happens. BIOS is back in, let's power up, three, two, one, go. Nope. Same thing, there's no activity whatsoever. The next idea I have is to use a little BIOS which was developed by Dexer from the, the Retro Web community. It's um, kind of a universal BIOS and it does one thing, it writes I think 01 on the postcard and that's it and it stops. So that is just to confirm that there is activity on the bus, that the CPU can talk to the BIOS, it can execute code and that's it. Because uh, this board at the moment is, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, I'm not even sure about this BIOS, I'm not sure whether the original BIOS was corrupted, I have no idea. So by trying this, uh, I think it's called the ATH test, it's literally just a very, very basic instruction. If that doesn't work, there's no point in thinking about the BIOS, the version, corruption or anything. There's something very wrong with the motherboard. So let's try that. 
as you can see from this BIOS, they're literally like, what's that, 10, 12 instructions, and then it stops. So it's very easy it's just to test the basic functionality of the motherboard. The test BIOS is in. Let's uh, power up and see what happens. Three, two, one, go. Nothing. <laughs> That's bad. Actually, uh, I'd like to try something. I never tested this test BIOS on a different board. Let me get another board and let's uh, with a similar size BIOS and let's see if it works. Because I'm, you know, I'd like to make sure that it actually does what it says. Here we are. I got another socket seven. It's the Namtron PM9600. It's a, it's a board I repaired ages ago on an old video. I actually thought it's a good idea to make sure the CPU is working and also the RAM is working. So right now I've got the original BIOS, the the one which should work and 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 post. So let's uh, give power to this board and make sure we get some codes. I haven't got a video card, but uh, <laughs> to be honest, I don't care at this moment. In three, two, one, go. Yeah. It is working, We've got postcodes, and it should complain there's no video card. Perfect, so it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So we know the CPU is working, the RAM is working, it's the same RAM from the other board. Let me swap the BIOS with this test BIOS that I burned a moment ago, and we'll confirm it will just say 80 or 01, whatever, and, and then it stops. Here we go, test BIOS is in, power up, three, two, one, go. Yeah, exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's got a zero one on the postcard and it stops, but that means the board is working, there is communication. So the other board doesn't do that. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Printed circuit boards or PCBs, and there's no one better than PCBWay if you need one. If you follow my channel, you know that I've been using PCBWay for all my projects, and I've got to say I'm pretty happy with them. The service is great, the website is absolutely easy to use, placing an order is super easy, and the quality of the PCBs I've been receiving over the years, it's absolutely fantastic. So whatever your needs are, take a look at PCBWay.com, and don't forget that PCBWay don't just manufacture PCBs, they also offer other services like 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and a new service called UV printing, which allows you to print a picture or an image of any kind onto a PCB directly. Uh, it's a new service, take a look on the website, UV printing, I think I'm gonna test it at some point, it looks absolutely amazing. Take a look at PCBWay.com to discover all the options. The link is also down below in the description. Let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. Their help makes these videos possible. Now let's go back to the motherboard and let's continue with the troubleshooting. I've been working on this motherboard for a little while. I ended up in a dead end. I'd like to explain you rather than show you the whole process. So I focused my attention on the BIOS chip. And uh, from a previous video, we noticed that the address lines we're just going high to 5 volts and doing nothing. I checked that again and yes, that was still the case. I then went to check the data lines and uh, as before, they were reading something about 1.5 volts as they were floating maybe. So obviously the CPU to start needs the code in the BIOS. When the CPU starts, as soon as the reset line goes away, the first thing the CPU will try and reach the BIOS and basically ask the BIOS, hey, what do you want me to do? Now, my misunderstanding was that the BIOS was more or less talking directly to the CPU through, let's call it a CPU bus, through this 245 buffer chip, which is the chip designed uh, to allow another chip to use a bus when it's their turn to use it. So I ended up removing that IC and testing it in my component tester, which is my programmer, and it did test faulty. But it took me a little while to realize it was just flux residues on the chip, and once the chip was completely clean, my programmer said it was totally fine, so I put this back. At that point, I was a bit stuck, and I started looking online, and I found the data sheet of the white paper, maybe, of the M1543 chipset itself, the ALI one. And what I discovered is that the CPU doesn't talk to the BIOS directly, there's quite a lot happening in between. More in details, the CPU uses the CPU bus to talk to the North Bridge. The North Bridge uses the PCI bus to talk to the South Bridge. The South Bridge uses a special bus called the XD bus to talk to the BIOS. So for the BIOS to get something from the CPU, we have to go through this XD bus, through the South Bridge, through the PCI bus, through the North Bridge, to the, through the CPU bus, and finally, at the CPU. 
So let me change my approach here, and rather than focusing on the BIOS and wondering why is it not getting anything, you know, let's take a look at the CPU and see whether there's any activity on the address line and uh, data lines of the CPU bus as soon as the reset line disengages itself. I've got the back of the board facing me. I have marked a couple of pins here. Uh, C stands for clock, R stands for reset. And these two um, rows of pins are more or less all address lines. And these two rows of pins are more or less data lines. So, you know, we can, uh, we can take a look at that and see if anything happens. Let's double check that these pins are correct to make sure we have a clock, three, two, one, go. And yeah, the scope says 66 megahertz, so that's fine. Now let's... Uh, probe some random address lines and see whether we get anything out of it. Three, two, one, go. It goes high, but I didn't see any pulsing. We, we can check, we can magnify in a minute because sometimes it's just a tiny amount and at this kind of resolution, you can't really see it on the oscilloscope. Got a different address line. Same thing, it goes high, but not, doesn't do anything. Another address line. Same thing, it goes high, doesn't do anything. Let's change the row. And check this one. Same thing, it goes high, doesn't do anything. Another pin, same thing, they all go high and they don't do anything. Try again, same thing. So let's check some data lines here. Okay, three, two, one, go. This stays low, it doesn't do anything. Try another one, three, two, one, go. Doesn't do anything. Another line doesn't do anything. Another one doesn't do anything. Let's try that, uh, the other row. Doesn't do anything. And another one. As you can kind of see a glimpse of activity, but again, this is one volt for division. It, you see something happening, but it's absolutely nothing. Try another one. Uh, this goes high. Uh, but I don't see activity. Now let's try and magnify a bit and see if by any chance there's a little activity just when uh, it turns to high. I'm not expecting too many pulses coming out of the CPU if nothing is responding on the other side, but I'm definitely expecting some pulses. I've now set the scope to single, so the scope will stop when the address line goes high and then we can magnify and see if there's anything happening when it goes high. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so there it is. We have our uh, trace. We can magnify it now and see what happens. And as you can see, there's absolutely nothing happening. Let's see what happens on a different line. Three, two, one, go. And again, I don't really see any activity whatsoever if I'm zooming in. There's absolutely nothing. It goes high and it doesn't do anything. Let's try another address line. Three, two, one, go. And again, it just goes high and it doesn't do anything. Let's check on uh, one of those data lines which were actually going high. Uh, three, two, one, go. Okay, it is going high. And if I'm zooming in, there's absolutely nothing happening. Let's make sure that one of those lines which were not doing anything, uh, there wasn't any, any uh, pulses happening which I couldn't see on the scope. This is one of them, three, two, one, go. And the scope doesn't trigger anything, which means it, there's nothing happening while uh, the board is starting. Well, I'm not an expert when it comes to CPUs, but to me, this is telling me that the CPU is not starting for whatever reason. It's not even trying. It's not like it's trying to send a brief message to the North Bridge. The North Bridge is broken, it's faulty, and that's it, it stops. I don't see any activity at all from the CPU itself. So what it's telling me, and I'm totally guessing it, again, I'm not an expert, is that something is holding the CPU. There's nothing on the board. This is, this is not a BIOS problem. This is not a Northbridge problem, I guess. Um, but there is something which, for whatever reason, is holding, is telling the CPU, do not start. It's like the CPU, it's in a reset state. Now, now I had a look at the Intel Pentium white sheet and uh, I looked through everything and I was searching for some pins which would be able to pause the CPU, like a power saving uh, feature or anything that can tell the CPU, stop what you're doing because of whatever. Hoping to find something on the CPU that is where it's not supposed to be, and that would be our explanation that's why the CPU is not outputting any pulses, any data whatsoever. Right, I've been studying the Pentium processor datasheet and I think I found a number of pins which in my opinion might be able to stop the processor from doing anything. 
I've marked those pin on the PCB because it's a nightmare to match the uh, pinouts online with the actual PCB. Everything is always rotated or the other way around. I need to make an interposer or something for testing Socket 7 uh, processor. Maybe it's available already. Anyways, they're marked here and I would say we can start with the hold pin. As the name might suggest, hold is able to stop the processor and the processor should float most of the outputs, which is probably not our case, but it's worth checking. This is active high, so if the uh, hold pin is high, that means that something else outside external from uh, of the processor is telling the processor do not start. Got the oscilloscope in roll mode, so it's easier to see what happens. Three, two, one, go. No, it's low, which means it's not active, so hold is definitely not being triggered. Next pin would be uh, HLDA, which is hold acknowledge. Uh, that would be high when hold is happening. It's the processor basically responding with, okay, I'm holding. Um, it's worth checking that one in case something else is holding the processor, but that should be linked to the hold pin. So I'm not expecting to find this high which means it's, uh, the processor is being uh, held in place. Let's check this pin, three, two, one, go. And no, it's low, uh, this is active high again, so which means the uh, hold acknowledge pin is not active, which means the processor is not being asked to hold in place, to hold and do nothing. Another pin I found is A hold, which stands for address hold, and you should hold all the address lines. Um, so again, let's have a look at this pin and it's active high, Three, two, one, go. And as you can see, this is going high for a moment, so the processor is being asked to hold the address lines for a moment, but then it goes low, so which means the processor should now then be able to start and do what it's supposed to be doing. Next pin would be the STP clock, and that's some sort of power saving. You shouldn't stop the processor completely, but again, it's again I'm, I'm uh, clutching a straw here. <laughs> so it's one of those things which should be able to somehow either slow down the processor or stop the processor. It's a power saving feature. So let's check this one. This is active low, so I'm expecting this signal to be high for not being active. Let's take a look, three, two, one, go. And yes, this is going high and it's staying high, there's nothing happening. Um, so this is also not enabled. Now we've checked the reset pin, uh, which is active high, so it goes high for a moment and it goes low. The last one is called RS. It stands for run stop. It's part of a debug port and it's active low. So I'm expecting this to be high. Let's take a look, three, two, one, go. And it is high, so this is not active. Uh, it means the processor is not being asked to stop by this pin. So, unfortunately, I'm stuck here. <laughs> I've been having this board for quite some time, uh, I've been uh, playing with it on and off, and I can't figure out what's wrong with it. Now, the thing is, if the processor is not doing anything, and I know this processor works on a different motherboard, th there's no point in checking anything else. I can't figure out whether there is something on the board like a jumper, which is in the wrong position, and I have the guts feeling that this is the case, because the uh, uh, manual of this board, well, all the information I can find about this board online, they're not 100% accurate. I can see there's some jumpers in a different position, some jumpers which are not documented on what I find online, so I have this feeling that it's just a jumper, like the reset line, it was just a jumper which was completely undocumented on the manual, and maybe that's the case, but I don't know, I've been tinkering with those jumpers as well and I couldn't find anything. For the CPU not to start, th there must be some kind of condition, some pins in the wrong place, but I can't find anything. As I said, I'm not an expert on this, so obviously I'm missing something, uh, but if the CPU is not outputting a single pulse of data, I don't know what to do, you know, I, I, it, to me it means the CPU is in an illegal state, which means the CPU is not allowed, is asked not to start. So this is a no fix. Uh, I can't fix this motherboard. I'd love to, but I'd like to uh, get to the end of this project. I'm happy to leave it as a no fix, but I do feel there's something with this board that can be fixed. So I'm asking your help. I'm sure there's one of my viewers who is much more knowledgeable and comfortable with how the CPU works and the buses and everything than I am. 
can you help me? Is there anything else I can check? Is there anything else that comes to your mind that I should check any other pin that might be responsible for stopping the CPU? Or if you're familiar with this board, maybe you know about the jumper or anything. Otherwise, really, I'll have to give up on this board. I hate this. Um, but I can't find anything. Um, one thing I'm thinking of doing is to reflow the north bridge and the south bridge. But again, I would still expect some activity out of the CPU. And if there's nothing out of the CPU, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. So I'll have to stop here because, uh, again, I've been playing with this for a while. But I really would like to give it another go. I really would like at least to know what happens. Why is the CPU not starting? Why is the CPU not outputting anything? I'd like to find a pin which comes from the North Bridge. Maybe the North Bridge is dead and it's um, holding a specific pin in the wrong place and that's why the CPU is not starting. I'd like to understand why this happens. Hopefully you can help me. Please do leave a comment down below and hopefully we can either make it work together or find out why this is not working and then, you know, give up and move to the next project. But for now, I like I have this thing and it's like, I can't even understand why this is not working. And if you know me, I don't like the situation. So help me if you can. If you can't, obviously, don't worry. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though, again, it's a no fix. And if you did, as usual, you know that I appreciate a thumb up down below and consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of things. I'm looking forward to your comments and your feedback, your suggestions. Questions. Uh, for now, I thank you for watching, wish you a great day and hope to see you again soon here on my channel for my next videos. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.